Can the unprecedented demographic growth on a global scale be really without great impact? The demographic boom that our planet has undergone for more than a century is a well-known and dazzling phenomenon through a leap that will bring us to more than 9 billion by 2050 and which will bring us to be 3.3 billion more by 2100. But have we realized all the consequences? Actually, this demographic boom hides a little-known phenomenon, its dynamic impact. But what is dynamic impact? It is simply the fact that a fraction from the huge human reservoir generated by the demographic boom coming from poor households rises legitimately towards the world middle class. It is apparent that the world middle class is growing in size continuously and that it has an increasing global environmental impact. But on this trajectory towards the middle class, we often neglect that just to meet the increasing basic needs for electricity, housing, transport, activities that emit a lot of CO2, such as the opening and operation of coal-fired power plants, the production of steel or cement, or the mobility deployment, are in very strong expansion. And finally, the well-off class feeds on the expansion of the middle class to exploit solvent markets, leading to overproduction and widening inequalities. Production and consumption impact, mainly generated by privileged social classes, combine to this dynamic demographical impact, forming a common amplified impact, to which is added a static demographical impact. The dynamic demographic impact is hidden because it is incorrectly accounted for in the impact of population consumption, thus reducing the impact of demography to its static and inertial component. Demography is the most influencing factor in CO2 emissions of human origin since one century. We estimate that the proportion of these different impacts in 2019 was roughly 34% for production and consumption and 66% for demography. Emissions will tend to increase beyond until 2050 because of demographic inertia and even until 2100. Even if we manage to reduce the impact of consumption, if we do not concern ourselves at the same time with the demographic impact, the expected benefits will be wiped out and outweighed by the impact of the growing population. Furthermore, if we had known how to contain the level of population where it was in 1920, that is 1.8 billion, we would have obtained, assuming an identical progression of living standards, an annual CO2 degassing necessarily lower than the level recommended by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, to limit the climatic risk to 1.5 degrees warming. We now hardly imagine how to meet this goal, having reached a global degassing of 43 gigatons per year in 2019, with 7.7 .7 billion humans on the way to becoming 11 billion. How could the current management of climate risk revive the hope of an exciting and sustainable outcome by helping us to leverage the depressurization of demand through a global co-responsibility plan? In our project, the Intergovernmental Panel on Demography, the IPD, a United Nations body, would be responsible for setting the objectives of returning to sustainable population levels all over the world and, in particular, to reverse as quickly as possible the current upward trend in world population growth showing how these objectives would contribute to most of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, and constitute a zero SDG, because demographic growth is the accelerating base of all concerns for sustainable development. Proposing a mechanism of international consultation to achieve these SDGs by collecting, developing and selecting proposals. The IPD is essential because actually to mitigate climate risk, the IPCC is not sufficient. Indeed, 
In the context of the immense challenge of decreasing the annual worldwide CO2 release, which is constantly decreasing, the fruit of the imagined efforts is systematically offset by the demographic boom. The ecological vessel cannot save itself from a shipwreck only by bailing out the water that sloshed aboard if it does not at the same time concern itself with filling the gapping hole of uncontrolled population in its hull, which is constantly widening and through which it sinks. The IPD makes it possible to bring, in the mid to long term, the prospect of a depressurization of demand by using the demographic leverage. The IPD-IPCC tandem will strengthen the existing international effort based on family planning, education and development aid by means, as well as by ethical, united and responsible actions. Thus, the IPD-IPCC tandem can in particular study coercive means 100% ethical and agreed. For example, the tandem could consider transforming the current value-added tax VAT into a socially oriented VAT or SOVAT. The French Federal Union of Consumers, UFC Que Choisir, proposes a societal VAT based on a modulation of VAT rates according to the health and ecological interests of the products. This modulation would make it possible to fill important societal gaps for a better quality of life all over the planet. It would depressurize demand not only by inciting the effort of sobriety with high rates for polluting, non-fair trade, superfluous and luxurious products and an attractive rate for products accompanying sustainable development with a zero rate for the production of basic commodities resulting from public-private partnerships ensuring that they are inexpensive, sober and respectful of the environment. The SOVAT revenue could help finance development aid by prioritizing demographic transition projects. It would encourage the establishment of social protection and upgrade it where it already exists. Finally, it would be a powerful lever for public health by encouraging the consumption of healthy, nutritionally balanced products thereby reducing the prevalence of chronic illnesses such as obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular or neurodegenerative diseases and certain forms of cancer. This lever would allow substantial savings because these illnesses represent a considerable annual cost of the order of tens of billion euros in most countries. A healthier population is also better protected against infectious agents that can be transmitted from animals to humans, to which the over-exploitation of natural environments and the loss of biodiversity exposes, both of them being accelerated by the current demographic expansion. In the absence of this SOVAT, developed countries feel obliged to have recourse to natalist policies which ultimately only allow the problems caused by the ageing of populations to be pushed back instead of resolving them in the long term. Funding of the social protection by a broader base than that resulting from activity would help to reverse the current demographic trend and would avoid the serious environmental consequences it engenders. To conclude, the SOVAT would be an appropriate international tool for depressurizing demand through responsible consumption, allowing developed countries to better contain and adapt their level of populations to meet the economical challenge. In view of the urgency of the challenges facing humanity, this video clip seeks to mobilize you by signing this petition which could allow to find a way out of the historic demographic denial. Einstein feared this denial when he alerted us in 1946 that, among the three bombs that threaten the world, the demographic bomb will be the most terrible.
Think about it, share your opinion, and commit this little gesture of voting to transform it into another giant leap for mankind. Our working group towards sustainable economy proposes a societal project aiming at sustainable development, far from excesses, closer to balances, and being part of an effort to reconcile ecological interests with economic interests in a collaborative mode. We join forces with all other initiatives that share the same objective. Welcome to this project!